Welcome to episode 009 of IOTC. We're sitting here with the one and only magnificent Julie Blue is in the house. <laughs> vocalist, <laughs> composer, write, uh, song, singer, songwriter, extraordinaire, vocal coach. Love her and I can't wait to get in on this conversation. Thank you, Julie, for being in on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. And the pitter patter you're going to hear is uh, <laughs> Samba, the Portuguese wonder dog who wants to get in on the action too. He's and beautiful. thank you for being here, Pam. And th thank you. Her house is amazing, by the way. I just have to say that on record because that was very <laughs> important for me. Um, anyway, so let's get into this. Let's get into this interview, Julie. We're, and you know what? To the audience, we're, we're doing this thing. Where we're trying to not look at each other. I mean, obviously, as human beings, we want to acknowledge each other. Um, but we're looking at you, so here's looking at you kids. Okay, so Julie, can you share with us your background of how um, how your journey in finding your voice and liberating and helping other people to liberate and express their voice as well? Well, the you know the, my relationship with music mm -hmm. found me since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. I have always heard music in my head. And it's really how I cope with the world. I think as someone who's, I'm, who's an empath, I'm super sensitive. I feel everything. Uh, music is what saves me and what connects me to, to my higher self and, and to my deepest humanity. And, you know, it always was what I used when I was sad or when I was really happy is I would sing songs about it and, I think I just got so much solace out of music that it's no wonder that I grew up to be a film composer and a songwriter and someone who really wanted to share my music with people. And I did that for many years. And then it was like this shift began to happen where wherever I was, people would come out of the woodwork mm -hmm. and want to sing and want to sing with me. Mm -hmm. And I found myself leading a a huge choir, 75, 80 people for many years. Mm -hmm. And then recently in the last three years, I've shifted that again to really work on a deeper transformative level of with, you know, with the inquiry of how does sound, how does making our own sound and using our voice mm -hmm. free us up to be more authentic, more vulnerable and more confident to radiate uh, with authenticity in, in our lives and not just as singers, as beings. And how does that affect our relationship with ourselves and with others? So we were discussing earlier, like how does, um, so just to carry more on that, how do you facilitate sound and singing to um, help somebody express their authentic voice in their everyday life of who they are, what they do in their workspace, in their home space with their families? How do you facilitate that? How does that carry on? as you're describing, and I'd love for you to expand on that more, the safe space that you create with your clients and then how you, how that carries on into their everyday life. Well, what I'm, one of the things that I'm working with right now is song circles. Mm -hmm. And a song circle is an eight week long, um, three hours a week. And I have, so I, have, I get my mitts on people for a period of time because to shift anything habitually mm -hmm. takes time. Mm -hmm. So the first thing in a song circle is it's creating a sense of safety. And within that sense of safety, you can really relax. And what mm -hmm. I notice is when people relax and feel safe, it's so much easier to return to, you know, the first step of vocal technique is you were born with it. Mm -hmm. As a small baby, you breathed into your belly, Think about how a baby's belly expands. And when you go to express, you released your jaw. And furthermore, you expressed everything. That's how you got fed. That's how you survived. Right. So that first step is being able to feel comfortable and safe enough to relax into your body. And then the next step is to use what I call singing hacks 
you know, to, to <laughs> shift that. up to a few, some habitual things to make the act of singing easier and easier. And then how do you take that into your life? Mm -hmm. Well, what I've been doing is creating really specific tools so that you can practice the, this, these activations, if you will, and be able to call on, for example, when you breathe in through your nose and you breathe into your belly and you feel your belly expand and you hiss out to the count of seven. Now, if you were to do that a few times, even one time, okay. you notice you feel more... I feel more relaxed. You feel more relaxed. Yeah. You feel more calm. Yeah. So that's just one small, tiny example of when you get triggered or you get upset and you feel your shoulders start to rise, mm -hmm. you feel your throat start to tighten, you take that breath, you hiss, hiss it out, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're... It's that state change. Mm -hmm. You're back to home again in being able to go, okay what is the expression that I need to right now, as opposed to just reacting to something and regretting it later. Oh, that's so well said, because I think, I mean, I've certainly been practicing on breath work and, and that as well, but like sound work is almost like, a, you know, we were discussing earlier about how it almost like expresses, expresses emotions in the body when you're going through things and, or if you have friends or family going through things and how, can you expand more on like how you can acknowledge what's going on in your body or if people are going through challenging times and how music can help liberate um, emotions and even thought to get out of, as you were saying, out of the mind space a little bit mm -hmm. and then, um, in, you know, raise your vibration. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think that there's a whole bunch of different ways to answer that question. Okay. And this is really why what I've been working on is an online course called empower your voice okay. and I've just released it. So, what I've put into the course is really the answer to the question. Yeah. There's three audio blueprints, which are hypnosis tracks. Mm -hmm. And what they work on, on a subliminal level, mm -hmm. is the inner voices. And you know what? We all have them. I've toured and played with magnificent musicians mm -hmm. and listened to Dalai Lama interviews. And even the highest beings sometimes have thoughts that that don't serve us well mm -hmm. so i call that the inner critic so once we start to know our inner critic and start to be able to turn it down right. then we've got the inner freedom okay. to to really express ourselves okay. the other piece is the voice is it's, it's like going to yoga you're you're not going to go one day and go okay that's it i've got it it's a practice yeah so if you can sing something every day and keep that that feeling of being able to breathe into your belly and shape the vowels with your jaw. And further to that, add the emotion and the feeling to what you're saying. You're in a position where you can state shift. State shift. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Isn't that a good go. one? <laughs> Please expand on that, Julie. Well, <laughs> state shift is, you know, I write a lot of chants and then I've arranged uh, quite a number of traditional chants. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we chant the traditional chants, mm -hmm. we are tapping into an ancestral mm -hmm. practice that's thousands of years old. Mm -hmm. And it's the vowels that's carrying the intention. Mm -hmm. So if you have a practice, for instance, of more compassion, we were chanting, um, you, you know, for, for more compassion. Each time you do the chant and you know that that's what you're desiring and you're visualizing, filling yourself up with compassion so you can send it out, you, your state changes. And yeah. it's such an immediate way mm -hmm. to be able to honor yourself as a human, honor the feelings that you have, not ignore them or pretend they're not there because then they're going to come out and grab you in the least skillful way, but to really honor them and help them shift and help yourself shift to a different frequency to be able to do in that moment what you've come to do. Wow. That's, I'm blown away by that answer. Thank you for sharing that. Um, how do we, how do you help, um, you know, clients and people facilitate like cultivating that vulnerability, that openness space, like into, like through, through music and sound, through practicing this, does it, does it basically cultivate those qualities 
within somebody to to accelerate or activate it more into their everyday life? Is that how mm. is that how it goes? Well, I think there's a couple answers to that too. Okay. And the, for many people, uh, to be able to sing and have your voice heard is something that's really vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And to be and when you choose to do that. You're, 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 you're saying, I'm going to accept myself as I am in this right. moment. And my redefinition of singing and permission to sing is permission to be imperfect. How else do you learn anything? Right. And when you can really bring love into your voice right where it is right now, you're, you're falling in love with yourself. So that's one piece is that self-acceptance and that self-love because the more you do, think about anything you're confident at. Mm -hmm. You're confident because you've been doing it and doing it and doing it. Right. So it's going to take some practice and having some things to sing. And then once that's there, you bring that energy of being able to A, create a sense of relaxation in your body, being able to B, Acknowledge what you're feeling mm -hmm. and sh state shift should you choose to, mm -hmm. to be able to communicate really clearly mm -hmm. or to be able to sing a song. Um, you know, I, we were talking earlier about how you facilitate like even corporate groups and work groups, right? On, on finding their voice in, in the workplace. Can you expand more on that? Cause I love some of the exercises that you, you did and I think we can all learn from <clears> that. In, in in whatever it is that you're doing, whatever your passion project is, it's to, it's to cultivate some of these skills because I, I was blown away by it. Well, maybe you can tell by my dolphins on the wall <laughs> that yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm playful. And so that's one of my core values is is playful and, and deep listening and creativity. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I love to do within a business environment, and I did it recently with here in North Van with, with a group of politicians, and what I invited them to do, first of all, was to be in their bodies and open up their voices. And I use music and sound. And as soon as you do that, you're out of thinking all the time mm -hmm. and into a space of deeper heart, mind coherence. And that in itself is a state shift. Then the next thing that I did was invited them to form small groups and come up with some core values of their own mm -hmm. and then to create a cheer, like, you know, remember camp? and have movements in the same words. And as soon as they started to do this, they became like high school students again. They were laughing and having fun. And the person who wasn't always in leadership was popping in ideas and being listened to. And they really had an experience of collaborative creativity. And then I took their ideas once they did their chance and created a song on the spot that was about them and their values. And people love to be heard. Mm -hmm. People love to be acknowledged. And I think all of us are highly creative, whether we admit it or not. Yeah. And to be put in a situation where you're invited yeah. to express your ideas and you know you're not going to get trounced for it. Yeah. Uh, I judged think, for it. Yeah. yeah. It, it creates... You know, you could say, well, the workplace is about productivity and why are we doing this stuff? And the answer is because when people are relaxed, they're less stressed. Yeah. Less stress equals less sickness, better health. Mm -hmm. When people are creative and playful, there's more space for ideas and possibilities mm -hmm. and more space for an emotional intelligence kind of listening which is the kind of place I want to work. I want to work if everybody's singing and like doing cheers all day. Like, <laughs> well, they're maybe not doing it all day. But what I heard, you know, when I've done this for weekends, the beginning of yeah. a corporate retreat is that people were thinking outside of the box right. all weekend. And people who didn't usually pop up were like going, hey, what about this? Oh, and that, that gets juicy. That I like that juicy. That's a good word. Because I, I was just going to say it's a very like intimate thing to like, open your vocal cords and your voice box like in a workspace or just just anywhere even sometimes like even on social media to even um project like what you want to say and how you want to say mm -hmm. it and then almost like a fear of it being criticized or judged or the dreaded comments section and mm -hmm. all this jazz right it's like how do we go about and navigating that and returning back into that authentic self space that I would like to think doesn't really give a rip in some ways, <laughs> right? Because that person centered, but then at the same way to still be empathetic and all those things at the same time. I mean, 
Well, I think sometimes the very worst critic is our own inner critic. That's true. And so that's part of the conversation. And, you know, I play with that and use the words blah, blah, woof, woof, because it's such a divinely humorous way to be able to acknowledge that most of us, most of the time, have that critic going, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. and it says different things for different people. But yeah. when I open up a space and ask, Every single person in the room deals with it. So at least we're acknowledging that. And further to that, you know, when I look at the troll kind of comments, those are people with really strong inner critics who haven't dealt with them at all and are putting them out on other people. And That's all I have to say is just don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, when you see someone being vulnerable <laughs> yeah. and going to express themselves, yes. there's you know, if you don't like it, just turn it off. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. That's 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 well said. And and to and for those like who do support and have that positive environment is to say, hey, you know what, you know, well done and be more encouraging and more inviting to each other. So I appreciate the that as well. That's so well said, Julie. I think that you know, I don't know how you feel yeah. or how you feel, but I think that one of the the scourges of this time is that a lot of people are really lonely. Mm. You know, oh, well, I've got 5,000 Facebook friends. And yeah, there's a measure of community. Mm -hmm. I think underneath what we all crave and long for mm -hmm. is to be heard and to be seen and to be accepted as we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's something really important to remember. And in the space of singing, mm -hmm. you know, what happens literally now science is caught up and it's reflecting back what I've known since the beginning of singing myself and then working with so many people yeah. is that we actually experience a biochemical state change the cortisol, the stress hormone lowers, mm -hmm. the dopamine, the serotonin, mm -hmm. and also the oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone, raises so that when you sing in a group of people, over and over I see people who sometimes are kind of reclusive, mm -hmm. find lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. And we all need our home team, right, Pam? I love that. Yeah. Yeah. We're, We're not, some love right we're now. We're not here Pam. to do this life by ourselves. <laughs> so that's one of the things about singing that creates that kind of community where you know you can show up and sing whether you've had a terrible day or, or you're in tears or you feel great and you'll, you'll be accepted you know i have to like let's share about that like for the days that that kind of hit you hard how does singing impact your life because even i i do a little bit of here, here it goes broadway right or whatever <laughs> like i'll <laughs> I'll like put that on and you know like I'll sing in my room or something like that and it and it helps like you just said well, with your term was it stage, stage shift. shifting stage Ooh. shift yeah so like um like how does that how did, how how can we incorporate these tools like every day in and like I mean as you've already expressed but even some, something more like something that, like do we just you know I had a shitty day I'm gonna put on a song I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna stage shift. Well, I think that we're all such unique beings that you got to find out what rocks it for you. And okay. if it's Broadway for you, <laughs> crank up the Broadway. Or gangster rap. Gangster rap, oh. you know, crank it up and 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 jam out to it. Okay. For, for me, and yeah. I'm really fascinated by the cultural medicine of chant and song and music. I've traveled a lot and investigated a lot. And, you know, after all that, I know this much, but I do know mm -hmm. that when we chant in specific languages and thinking specifically of some of the Sanskrit chants, we are tapping into a teaching and an energy that th that is thousands of years old. Right. And by, by tapping into that, it's not about any kind of religious thing. It's about a frequency thing. Okay. And we are, for example, there's one called Ganesh. And the Ganesh chant is about moving obstacles out of the way. Yeah. And I remember trying to get into this lock and I had people were, were out the other side of the door waiting. There was 25 of them and I couldn't open it. And okay. I was frustrated. And I took one moment and went and chanted that chant and calmed right down and boom, the lock opened. And it was such a demonstration Seriously. of a state change within me. Yeah. So I write many of these chants and I also arrange and record the traditional ones and there's something that happens in the repetition of something okay it's there's something called entrainment okay and that's when our heartbeats literally begin to sync up together right my brain and my heart come into coherence mm -hmm. and for a moment i get to quit thinking about what i didn't do right yesterday and what i have to do tomorrow 
and I'm right presence. And that's where the magic happens. That's where the healing happens. Mm. So often I see people come in with lots of pain and you know, I had frozen shoulder for a month and it was the most excruciating thing ever. Mm -hmm. And when I came to lead the song circle, I, I was clear of pain because I was so present. So that is ultimately the biggest state changer is being able to come right back into the moment. Mm -hmm. And for some people, meditation works and it's a beautiful thing. For me, when I've got something to chant or something to sing that touches my heart, it just brings me right into that space. I felt that. Like, I kid you not, like my, my body's actually physically vibrating right now. Like it's just in a buzz like state. I think for me, like my takeaway is that it's so impactful that, you know, I, I know, um, you know, songs are word as well, but you know, when you're describing the chants and the ancestral lineages and waking up these voices that were before us and like mm -hmm. bringing them to the present state that, that they want to be heard, like through us, through, through yeah, that's, you. That's pretty cool too. That is pretty cool. Through you now. And, and, um, it's just, it, when you're talking about the healing aspect, like singing a song literally breaks uh, it unlocks you like you're unlocked and it unlocks your heart space and I have done Julie's circle with a whole bunch of women um there's a term what was the term for it actually with, the, with your circle the sacred circle or the, the radiant heart song radiant, circle there you go I did that and and I tell you not and I'm gonna be a little vulnerable here when I first came in I was like this because you know <laughs> gangster rap <man. laughs> and then you had me chanting and like with such amazing women such an amazing space and you held space for this like for everybody there and we laughed and we giggled and we were like kids yeah. and beautiful exercises you taught there and like something yes yeah, state shifted within me to to um like be more open be explore more play more and mm -hmm. and be in a place with other women where women can support other women you know and like really just high five each other and laugh and giggle and dance and do all of that so i just love that so um I wanted to ask you with with finding your voice, right, mm -hmm. and, and how you facilitate. Where was that moment in your life where you're like, "I found my voice," you know, and I'm I'm going to help and facilitate people to find theirs. What does that mean for you to find your voice? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing is it it means we're we're all works of art in progress. Yeah, and you know, each day is another uh, another opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. I think that finding my voice musically, to me what that is, is that what I hear in my head, I can express out my voice and I can express with my fingers on keyboards. And that took me many years of hours and hours and hours, 10,000 hours times three okay. to be at, at that stage, okay. which, which I am. And then when I look <clears throat> at finding my voice as a human, mm -hmm. well, so for example, here's an example of it. I see many people who, with their community members, with their family, they get to a point where something gets triggered, someone says this, someone says that, and they walk away from each other. And yeah, it's, and, that's, it's, and it's done. That's it, that's, yeah. Or someone finds their voice and says, wah, 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 and the other person says, and, and it's done. Yeah. And to me, finding your voice is really about finding your greater humanity and finding your compassion and also finding your boundaries. I had a conversation yesterday with someone who I'm about to set out into work and we had we had a misunderstanding really, mm -hmm. the miscommunication that led to a disagreement and both of us were committed. We spent the hour on the phone and we really listened to each other. And what could have been that said, I'm done with you, yeah. another flake in the planet. We ended up being Thank you for listening to me. Yeah. Thank you for understanding me. Yes. Thank you for mirroring back to me um, my vulnerability and helping me learn. And to me right now on the planet, that is the bigger conversation about finding our voice. How do you get to that place, Julie? I mean, you, you like you just mentioned repetition to not, I mean, I guess it's self-compassion as well to not be at that place where it's reactionary because I think it's almost like you're untraining yourself to do the impulse reaction and then you're unlearning to learn something new again. Well, it takes a lot of self-forgiveness because yeah. we're human and we're not perfect. 
-hmm. just like in this. It's like, yeah. oh, it wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. And being able to, without any self-recrimination, go do over. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I really like that. I really like being able to say, that's not how I intended that to come out. Mm -hmm. Please, you know, forgive me and let me have another opportunity. And that's a really big piece. I work with a, uh, actually a traditional Hawaiian chant called Ho'oponopono. Yes. And that's a whole other story how that came that we don't have time for today. Yeah. But it means to make right with the family. And that is a powerful, powerful way of clearing inside each of us mm -hmm. and coming to forgiveness. So that's first. Like we're none of us perfect. And the next thing is there's some really specific practices uh, that help to be able to get into that gap as you feel the anger arising, as you feel the reaction arising, to feel it and go, yup, this is coming up, and to be able to take the gap of the breath mm -hmm. in through the nose, into the belly, mm -hmm. and sigh it out really slowly. Why the hiss sound, Julie? You know, for me, the hiss, it's really interesting. The hiss is clearing on a gener energetic level. It's clearing the bile in my liver. It's okay. clearing the anger. Okay. And I mean, I don't have to hiss. I can just... Okay. It's just that moment of slowing down, calming my nervous system down. But if I never practice this, how can I remember? How can I remember myself right. and my intention to speak my truth with a compassionate, loving heart? That is not a task for the faint of heart. It mm -hmm. takes practice and commitment and lots of do-overs and a shit ton of humor because we're <laughs> going to we're gonna blow it. And, you know, we come back and go, oh, okay. And if we've got some music in us, it, it just allows for the rhythm and the flow of that possibility. There you go. Well, thank you, Julie, um, for all of this. I mean, this is like, I mean... This is like a journey, you know, we're here talking about finding your voice and singing and it's so intertwined holistically with just like a way of life, a way of being, leadership, business, day to day, acknowledging emotions, releasing forgiveness and compassion. So it's flowing the space into different areas of your life. And um, I thank you for being a leader in facilitating all of that. And I would love to ask you, what's next on your on your roadmap? Like, where are you headed to next? What's going on? Well, I think what I want to say is, you know, what's next is I love to share my music. And and you can find Julie Blue on iTunes and all the CDs, instrumental and, bio. and vocal. And so just tune into that music. I'm just... What's next is I've been working on my own personal uh, upgrade of my website. It's just taking ages, but that's coming. But, you know, for now, if I'm really excited because to share these tools mm -hmm. with people all over the world, mm -hmm. because I travel a lot, different groups bring me in, and always at the end they say, well, how can we work with you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, bring me back. And now... Oh my God, this, is, this online course is epic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 30 years of research and love and it took me a year to put together. And I mm -hmm. hired an artist to do all this really cool art. Yeah. And I'm taking you in 56 short 10 minute videos mm -hmm. and eight modules. I'm taking you step by step by step, just like you're right here with me. And I'm giving you chants and songs. And I love to share this work and what I know is it's not a one-time finger snap mm -hmm. it's a practice mm -hmm. and to have a practice of knowing okay I'm going to come back to this this and wake up in the morning with something playing in your head that's that's not a negative song that makes you feel bad but that's positive yeah it makes you feel up and that's what's next for me is yeah. Uh, you've been hearing some noises in the back. That's my 20-year-old son who's a fantastic musician and has just released his first CD. And, and he's old enough now. So I'm now back to, you know, what I did before I have him. And I toured a lot. And I love to go on adventures and mm -hmm. love to make new community and love to share these skills. So in this next year, I'm looking forward to, to traveling to some different places, to leading some retreats and to sharing these tools with you mm -hmm. so that you can empower your voice and, and grow your compassionate heart. 
Is that your message for people? Would you say, like, would that be your message for people to grow your heart and be more compassionate? Or what is your message for people today that you would like you would like to convey? It's like, interesting because I work with both women and men, and my choir was both women and men. Okay. But in the last couple of years, what has come, my directive has been, you need to work with as many women as possible because we are in the 11th hour and 59th minute here, and we need women's voices. We need the voices of those who have been quiet before to speak up, to speak up for our children, to speak up for our planet, mm -hmm. to speak up for the divine feminine and what is sacred. Mm -hmm. And to do it in a way that it can be heard. And right. that takes us listening right. to each other and listening to, I'm going to say our higher selves. Yes. Because there's no religious overtone, whatever it is you believe, yeah. that you're really tuning into what your purpose is. And whatever your purpose is, you're going to need your voice. Yeah. So bring your voice into the equation. Make sure how you speak and how you sing matches your purpose and how you feel inside. Mm. And if it doesn't, uh, take some time, use some tools mm -hmm. and bring your voice forward. And the other thing is that the singing is so much fun and so liberating. And I think we need to keep playing. We need to keep singing. And of course we need to, you know, uh, I believe compassion is the molecule that connects us all together. Oh, seriously, that's so good. I do. That's good. Well, you know what? Um, thank you, Julie, for being here. I do, I, I honestly want to squeeze, like, even if it's like a little chant or something that we could leave the audience with to practice at home, that would be great. Sure. And what a way to like begin and end a conversation. All right, Pam, let's do it. All well, right. <laughs> and this is if you go to uh, radiantheartsongcircle.com. Yes, you can get this chant. It's right there, and it's it's one of the ones that I made up, and it's very simple, and it's about being in your heart, and it goes like this. Uh, so you want to sing too, don't you? I got to try. Okay. I got to try. I want to get so you in on it. I'm going to teach this how I teach. I don't. Even though I'm a schooled musician with lots of degrees, I teach in the traditional call and response way. So I'm going to give it line by line, and then you right. can jump in. Let the way of the heart. Let's do it. Oh my God. Let the way, <laughs> way of the heart. That's it. And for you to do it, what you can know okay. is no one's judging you. And okay. if you're here to judge her singing, then turn it off and go away. Oh <laughs> but if you're here to say we all deserve to try stuff and we don't have to be perfect, okay. and I'm going to try it too, then reach your hand out and I've got you. Here we go. So the first line says... Let the way of the heart. Let's do it. Let, Let the way, way of the heart. heart. Yeah, then we say it again. The way, way of the heart. heart. Then we say the way, way of the heart. heart. That's it. And then we're going to say, call me home. And notice when I say home, yeah. I'm making this home. Call me, me home. home. Listen to it once and you'll have it. Then we'll sing it a few Kay. times. Listening. Let the way of the heart, the way of the heart, the way of the heart, call me home. Let the way of the heart, the way of the heart, the way of the heart, call me home. Let the way of the heart, the way of the heart, the way of the heart, call me home. Did you hear her? You sang, seriously, the place where I don't blow smoke, I mean, I'm a... I'm you're, a, you're I right don't here. blow smoke. I, I'm a skilled, you can see how many films I've written, how many CDs. I'm a music industry professional. Yes. Pam just sung right along with me, right in tune, <laughs> right you. in time. How did it feel? It felt, it felt good. It felt vulnerable. I'll tell you yeah. that. So yeah, but yeah. no, it felt good and it felt good singing with you. So thank you for making this sing sing. And I hope, yeah, the sing was singing and I hope you were singing too. Yes. Thank you for being part of the show and thank you, Julie. And all the links will be in the bio for you to find her find her she's a she's a rocket scientist to me right, bam 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 Ow. we out <laughs> <laughs>